I'm a failure. I wanted to be cool, I wanted to be popular, I wanted to be the guy, and, and I failed. Um, I was so desperate for, for attention, or not attention, but, but acceptance, that when I was 10 years old, I, I begged my mom to, to buy me luminous green cycling shorts. <laughs> they were in fashion at the time. <laughs> and I mean, if you think about it, what better way to win friends and influence people? And you don't believe me, but let me try and prove it to you. <laughs> so, I was, you know, a youngster at school. I, I didn't really have any, any cred. I didn't have any skills. I wasn't particularly good at sports or academics. I was thin. I, was, I had acne. I was shy. But basically, I was insignificant. But what I'm doing now is critically important to, to humanity. Guys, I just don't feel like you're taking me seriously. I mean, <laughs> is it the slops? I knew I should have wore smart shoes. <laughs> Let me just sort that out. But it's important work. And it's as important as what you would do if you pursued your true purpose on the earth. And you may not be a megastar, you may not be famous, but it doesn't mean that you're not going to have influence. Um, stop waiting for a better time to do what you were born to do. It's not about what other people think, it's about doing the thing that you were born to do and about overcoming the fear and the boundaries that stop you. No one else can be you. No one else can do what you can do. And Think about the cost of failure. There will never be another you. So how did I get here on this stage? Let me go back a step or two. At a nightclub, I was 19 years old. I was on the dance floor, and um, a mountain of a man came up, and he said he wanted to talk to me outside. And um, I wasn't really in the mood for conversation, so I tried to carry on dancing, but he, he was adamant. Um, he actually headbutted me, and he, he ran me out of the nightclub, and he, you know, pulled my hair and dragged me out, my shoes flew off. He threw me outside, I landed in the fetal position and I prayed to the God of my mother to save me. And uh, there was no answer that I could perceive, so I stood up to, f to, f to face, to meet my match. Um, and the next thing I remember, I was in hospital. And there was, you know, there was that fuzzy feeling of being above your body and all that. And, and I honestly, long story short, thought I was going to die. And at that point, I was filled with bitter lament of missed opportunities, of, of meaningless time spent and, and of an insignificant life. And at that point, I prayed to God and I said, if you're there, save me and, and give me another chance. I'll, I'll change this thing around. I'll, I'll, I'll live for something greater than myself. And it's not easy, but it's worth it. I haven't got it all figured out yet. I can't say that I've made it, but... I'm really excited to be enlightened to the point where I've decided that this is it. I've got one life to live, I'm going to give it a full go. Um, I've met, I've shared my vision with princes and politicians, and I'm living my dream. What's going to change your world is you deciding, actually, I want to do what I'm designed to do. I'm not going to look at financial implications, I'm not going to look at social implications, I'm going to do the thing that I know I should do in this world. And basically it boils down to these three things. It's what do you want to do, what are you good at doing, and how are you going to create income? And what you need to do is you need to find the place where those things overlap. If you're good at something, and it creates income for you, but you don't enjoy it, you're basically a slave. Why are you doing what you're doing? You don't enjoy it. And one of the key things is, how do you find out what you want to do, what you really, really want to do? If you strip it all away, it's actually a really, really hard question. It's taking me half a lifetime to start answering that question. What is the makerspace? It's a community. Why does it exist? It exists to harness and channel people as a force for good. That's what we're trying to do. We're just trying to get people together and say, let's do good things. Let's apply our minds and our hearts and our hands to do good stuff. How do we do it? By inspiring people to create physical things that haven't yet been created. We want to push boundaries. We want to innovate. They may have been something that someone else made. That's fine. But if you haven't made it yet, great. You're going to learn by doing it. And what do we do? We unlock access to equipment and knowledge through our community. 
It's online, it's offline, it's person to person, it's, it's connecting people. What is it? You're still wondering, and I'm still wondering, because I haven't been able to answer this question for the last three years. And I've decided not to try and explain it, because I'll bore you all to death. It's too technical. But can I give you a story, or two stories, to just explain it? So this is Bob. He's a, an accountant, late middle-aged. And uh, he's accepted his, his lot in life. He is, he's the guy who does the books, and he's not you know, creative. So he rocks up at a, at a cafe at the Makerspace, um, and uh, Science of Coffee is there doing some amazing stuff. And he has a coffee, and he loves the place. He loves the vibe, so he comes back. And then one of the baristas gets friendly with him and invites him to a coffee crafting class where they're actually going to teach him how to make coffee. So he comes, and he does that, and he enjoys it. And then he comes back for another class, and he learns an, something else, something a bit more creative. But when, he, when he's introducing himself at the, in the class, he says this. He says, I don't have a creative bone in my body. And he forgets when he was three years old, drawing on the wall, and his mom shouts at him. And he starts to enjoy this course, and he sees the thing that he makes, and he, and he realizes, wow, I do actually have something in me, and this is really cool, and this is really fulfilling. And he starts to pursue it, and he gets better at that skill. And the nice thing is he, he's got a great business acumen that he brings into the mix, and he starts to actually create some traction with this, this thing that he does that he loves. And what he finds is that after a certain amount of time, he's getting asked to do speaking arrangements. He's getting asked to do presentations on what he does. And at some point, he realizes he's actually reached escape velocity. He can actually stop being accounting, and he can do this thing full-time. And it's a revelation to him. And you know, parts of him are resurrected that have, that have been dead for many years. And he meets a young guy from, from a township who, who's come in recently. And, and this young guy um, was at his school, and a, and a mobile maker bus arrived and showed him all this technology. And he was very interested. And he was, you know, he, he had a bad upbringing, and his, his mom and dad had both passed away, and he was staying with his aunt. And he came to the makerspace to, just to inquire, just to see, and what he finds is that people really show genuine interest in him, and they start to encourage him, and he starts to develop himself, and as soon as community starts to talk, talk about him as the guy who can do that thing, oh, you should ask Jabalani, he can do that. And he starts to find a sense of pride in himself that he's never known before. And he works on that, and, he, and he's encouraged by the community, and he spends time with Bob, who mentors him. And he eventually gets to a point where he, he unlocks a, um, a research fund and helps him to, with partners within the space, find a new way to harness solar energy. That's eight times, it's four times more efficient than current methods because current methods are not very efficient. And when he, he gets his findings, he publishes them internationally. And people ask him, why, why are you publishing it? You should patent it. You should, you should hold on to it. And he says simply, Freely I've received, freely I must give. So that's a story that we want to see happen, and we need your help. We don't have the resources, we have, we've got leadership and vision, and resources, we've got to bring those things together, as we've, as we've heard today. But I want to include you guys on this dream. It's a dream that has beautiful places to work, inspiring places with amazing equipment. Um, it's educational, part of the Maker Library Network. It's fun. It's educational and inspirational, and it helps people develop skills that they didn't know they had. Our values are quite simple. It's just a respectful environment where we want to inspire people, we want to teach them, we want to learn with them, we want to share. We want to do good things, like low-cost prosthetics for children. We're actually working on a project at the moment with a friend of ours, Patrick, who, who hasn't had a hand since he was 15, and we, we're busy Brian's in the audience, busy 3D printing him a bionic hand, and we're trying to create a way to get motors to make it work for him. Um, we're incubating nine unemployed youth at the moment. Um, we're developing citizen sensors, at which are very low cost, so that people can have data on the quality of the air and water and hold their institutions and businesses accountable. Um, we're building community upliftment sensors. We, we're in the process of planning a way to reduce HIV infection and, and children who are, and, and communities who are at high risk because of HIV, um, by creating a holistic solution that doesn't just look at testing them or just giving them nutrients or whatever, but looks at them as human beings that have, you know, so many different layers to them and so many different things that they, they need to express. So that's me. Thank you very much.